back and thank you for staying with us. We are excited to bring to you your candidate for House District 26. I am Merritt Linke, current chair of Board of Club 20, and I am joined by Representative Dylan Roberts. Representative Roberts' seat is uncontested, but we are grateful that he is here to discuss his vision for House District 26. Representative, please introduce yourself and begin your opening remarks. Well, thank you, Commissioner. It's great to be here at Club 20, and I am appreciative of the invitation to come and speak with you. Even though my race is uncontested, I still think it's important to talk about what uh, I would like to do for the next two years as your state representative and what uh, the vision for, for the future is. So I'm uh, very honored to be here with Club 20. My name is Dylan Roberts. I'm the state representative for Eagle County and Route County, which is House District 26. I grew up in Route County in Steamboat, and uh, that's where my parents still live. I know my mom is watching. Hi, mom. Um, and my fiance and I, Sarah, live in Eagle County now, where when I, we're not in the legislature, I am a deputy district attorney for Eagle County. Um, it has been a true privilege and an honor to serve as the state rep for House District 26 over the last three years. Uh, and I'm very proud of the work that we've gotten done at the Capitol uh, during that time. I've been the prime sponsor of dozens of bills that have been passed uh, over those last three years. Bills like a bill to expand the Rural Jumpstart Program, which has allowed more small businesses to open their doors and hire employees in rural Colorado. Uh, bills to allow healthcare co-ops to get started across the Western Slope and across the state State, which are working really well right now and giving people another more affordable choice for health insurance. Um, I was the lead sponsor of the bill to expand the Colorado in-stream flow program, which is going to help us conserve uh, our precious water resources during our dry summers, which could not be more important uh, than a time like this. And I wrote the first in the nation bill to cap the cost of insulin that has now been become a model across the country and has been passed by several other state legislatures as we try to rein in out of control prescription drug prices. Um, I'm most proud though that all of those bills are uh, bipartisan, that I've secured bipartisan sponsorship, that I've worked across the aisle to bring my colleagues uh, from all parts of the state on board with those ideas and uh, tried to show the value that they have for our entire state regardless of political party. But probably the, most, the thing I'm most proud about during my tenure as a state representative is I've held uh, 35 town hall meetings since I was elected. Um, I see these town hall meetings as the most important way to hear from my constituents. Uh, I have had them in every town across House District 26 from Hayden to Oak Creek to Gypsum to Vail and all the way over in Basalt. And uh, some of them have gone virtual in these current times. Uh, but that is why I'm proud of that because that is what a representative should be, is somebody who listens to their constituents. And we may not agree on everything, but I make myself available to speak to you, to hear your ideas, explain my positions, and work on your behalf at the Capitol. So it's great to be here, and I look forward to answering some questions. Thank you, Representative. Next, we have a few questions for you that have been submitted by our Club 20 members. Our first question is, in your opinion, what are the three most critical issues impacting House District 26 and how will you address them if re-elected or when re-elected? Thanks. Um, so three top issues that I uh, am looking forward to focusing on uh, for House District 26 and the state of Colorado when we resume next session. Uh, first is jobs in the economy. Uh, we need to do everything in our power to work with uh, private industry, but also at the state government level to uh, help Colorado rebuild out of this recession. Um, we need to make sure that we are looking at regulations to incentivize small business, uh, changing things, looking at tax credits, and finding ways to keep people employed and keep businesses open. This has been an incredibly hard time for our small businesses and for many people who have lost their jobs. Um, and we've had a solid summer so far, and at least in, in the communities that I represent. But going into the winter and going into next year, uh, we know that we have a lot of challenges. And so I've passed several bills that have helped small businesses, and I look forward to working on those issues again. The next big issue is the cost of living and the cost of health care. This is the, by far the top thing I hear about when I'm talking to voters uh, at their door or over email or on the phone. Um, I've been a leader at the Capitol to try to reduce health care costs, to get more people affordable health insurance coverage, uh, also addressing issues like affordable housing and child care and the general cost of living in our Colorado mountain communities. And I look forward to continuing that work. And then finally, uh, protecting our environment and combating climate change. The fires this summer have put a new clarity on probably the most pressing issue for our globe over the next several decades. We have to combat climate change and we need to do more at the state level. Thank you, Representative Roberts. Our next question is, 
What does the water future of Colorado look like to you and how do you intend to fund the needed water projects to stabilize our state's water supply during drying times? Drier times. So as the representative of two, county, two headwaters counties, as well as the chair of the House Rural Affairs and Agriculture Committee, that's the committee where all water bills come. I take my responsibility for working on water policy very seriously. I think it's something that we need to do a better job of at the state level and we need to put politics aside and figure out the best way to better fund our water resources and our water infrastructure and protect the water that we have here in Colorado. Because as the climate gets warmer and as population in our uh, state increases, especially on the Front Range, our water resources are going to become much more limited. So I've been uh, a big supporter of the investment in our state budget in the Colorado Water Plan. I was a co-sponsor of Proposition DD, which was referred to the ballot last year and passed, which uh, legalizes sports gambling in Colorado, but allows that revenue to go to funding the Colorado Water Plan. Uh, we're in tough economic times, uh, but we need to always have water on the top of our minds when we're figuring, uh, when we're balancing our state budget and figuring out how to allocate resources. Because if we don't properly prepare for the future, I think water could become one of the uh, biggest issues uh, that we have to deal with. And I'd rather be ahead of the game on that than uh, get caught flat footed. So we need to keep working hard on Colorado's water. Thank you, Representative. Our final question is, it is well recognized that the concerns and priorities of Western Colorado and rural Colorado are often different from those of the metropolitan communities of Colorado's Front Range. How will you effectively represent and balance the diverse and sometimes competing interests of our state? So going down to the Capitol is a unique experience uh, because when you are a Western Slope legislator or a rural legislator, when you arrive there uh, in the Capitol, you quickly realize that you're outnumbered. Uh, just because of the population is on the front range and in the big cities, there are more urban representatives and suburban representatives than, than uh, rural representatives. But I have uh, made it a point to try to establish as many relationships with uh, my urban colleagues uh, on both sides of the aisle uh, and talk to them about the issues that are important to my district and how our work at the Capitol will impact uh, everybody back home in my district and across the Western Slope. Uh, we need to make this a collaborative uh, endeavor, not one that pits rural Colorado against urban Colorado, but we can work together to solve these issues. When we lower health care costs, that helps everybody in the state. When we work on climate change and protecting our water, that will help everybody in the state. And I, um, you know, I find it frustrating sometimes when people think that this has to be some sort of battle or that we have to fight for rural Colorado over urban Colorado. It doesn't have to be that way. If we recognize that we have a, goal, a shared goal of improving the entire state of Colorado, I think the legislation that we pass at the Capitol will start to benefit uh, rural Colorado even more. So um, building those relationships uh, is something I've been very proud of, uh, but can always do better. So we'll be working hard to explain Colorado's uh, rural and mountain values down at the Capitol and band together uh, for the common good of our state. Thank you so much for your responses. We will now move into closing arguments, or closing remarks, sorry. Representative Roberts, please give us your closing remarks. Well, thanks. It's been great to be here and, and share a few ideas uh, with Club 20. Uh, my first three years at the legislature were uh, during very good economic times, uh, at least the first two and a half years. I recognize now that we are in a completely different world at the Colorado State Legislature and in our country and in our nation. And so I know that our job as legislators is going to change and probably become more important because we are gonna be facing budget cuts. We will still be facing a global pandemic. And so I very much look forward to going to the Capitol to work on those issues, but recognize that it is a uh, humbling responsibility to try and lead Colorado out of this pandemic and out of this recession. Um, but like I said, if we work together and we find some common good in improving Colorado, in lowering healthcare costs and protecting our environment, caring for our fellow citizens, uh, we can pass some very good legislation. We can pass a budget that we can be proud of, even in difficult times. So uh, I'm not in under any illusion that it's going to be easy or even that it will be fun over the next two years, 
but I very much am humbled by the opportunity to continue serving House District 26, Eagle County where I live now and am making my life, my family, and my career, and Route County where I grew up and where I have so many family and friends uh, still living there. So it is a true honor and a privilege to represent House District 26. I could not be more thankful for the opportunity to continue to do so for two more years, and I'm eager to get to work uh, back at the Capitol on behalf of Western Colorado come January. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation in today's event. We appreciate your willingness to join us and to share with, you, with us how you plan to represent House District 26 in your next term. We're now going to take a 10-minute break before we hear from U.S. Senator Cory Gardner. Thank you all.